check. Check, check. Check. Merry Christmas. 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 <laughs> it is a Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. Binky down. It is so good to see you guys. We'll uh we'll keep it short today, but you know, we'd always love to be able to come and to worship to celebrate this time of year together as a family, as a church, as a body, and I'm so glad you guys are here today. I hope you guys are ready to sing some joyous songs to the Lord this morning <laughs> while Milo tries to take the microphone. I'm going to share this quick scripture and then uh, actually, and then I'm going to pray over the offering. And then uh, we'll get into some worship for just a moment. Like I said, it's going to be a short short service, but we, we didn't want to miss an opportunity to come and worship the Lord on this very special day, this very special season. So Isaiah 9, and I know we, sh we shared this last week, but it's just, it's so good and a great reminder of why we're here and who we're worshiping, who we're praising. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is who we worship. This is who we come to celebrate and to give praise to. And uh, it's just a wonderful reminder as we come and we sing this morning who it is that we're singing to, who it is that we're celebrating, who it is that we're praising. So if you would join me this morning, I'm going to pray over the offering and pray over the service this morning. And then if you want to, if you want to give, the plates are, are right here, and, uh, or you can give online if you'd like as well. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord. Lord, first and foremost, just to honor you and to, to lift you up and to celebrate you, Lord, today. And God, we, we thank you that you've blessed us in a way that we're able to be here, we're able to come to this place and to celebrate you and to worship you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you, God, for the offering that we're able to give today, God, the blessing that we're able to pour back into you, into your church, into your kingdom, Lord. And thank you for blessing us and thank you for pouring into us, Lord. Thank you for creating in us, God, a good stewardship, God, to do your will and to, to partnership into your kingdom, Lord. And so, God, we, we pray over this offering. We pray a blessing over it, a blessing over the service today, Lord, as we sing to you, God, as we worship you, Lord. Would you just enter this place and enter our hearts, God, as we come surrender to you, Lord. 
We love you. And we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And thank you for your son, Jesus. And it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can come and give if you'd like. Or you can give online. Brother Matt's going to lead us in some worship this morning. Just going to sing a few songs this morning. Just sing along with them. I'm probably going to mess up on some of this stuff. So we'll just... Sing so loud that you can't hear me play. How about that? I'll just take care of itself. We're going to sing Joy to the World. And, and the, what's funny about this, we sing this as a Christmas song, but really this is a song about Jesus' return. And I think it's fitting that this time of year we do sing this song because it's a reminder of why he was born. That, that one day he's going to set up his kingdom here and we're going to reign with him. And really what a gift that'll be. Not only the gift of salvation, which I'm so thankful for, but the, but the gift of being able to come back here and recognize all the good things that he created and reign with him on his creation. Where there's nothing but peace and joy, no hunger, no homelessness, no hurt, no anger. We all belong to a family. Amen.
heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt sing it again sing it okay
Let's sing that again. Sing that chorus again. Let's just let's just revel in the fact that we have this hope. We have this light that the world doesn't have. We have a hope. We have a peace past this life, past our understanding. Lord, this isn't just a day to celebrate your birth, but this is a day to look forward to your return and to your reign. Lord, this is confirmation of our faith. This is a day of celebration. This is, this is a day of, of new life and, and not, just, not just new life in the form of a babe that you came, God, but new life that you give us new life that you're bringing every day. God, new life that only you can provide. No matter what happens here, no matter what treachery we face here, we have new life. This life is not our last. This life is not our ending, yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We, we have a heritage that you have given to us. Yes, we have a future in you, Lord Jesus. So we praise you. We praise your holy name today, Lord Jesus. This is a day of celebration. Thank you, Lord, for coming. Thank you, Lord, for coming again. You will come again, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mighty name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Sing it out. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the King. Sing it again. Sing it again. Oh. Christ 
How fitting, how fitting it is for us to be here in this moment right now, focusing on Him. When for a month we focused on a lot of other things, but right now it's, let, let's let life come to us, stand still, and just focus on Him and the gift that He's given us. A gift I would dare say most of us, including myself, have not even scratched the surface at unboxing. Can we just take one moment and thank God for that gift? And then I'm going to read to you the Christmas story again. And then I'm going to talk to you for just a couple minutes about the word because. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this gift that you've given us. The gift, Lord, that is so deep and so rich and so wide, I have not even begun to completely understand it all. I have not even scratched the surface, or if it's a gift card, I have not even even begun to put a dent in what you've given us, in the amount that you gave us, and the amount you accredited to us. All because you looked at us one day and said, you're my friend. And Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him righteousness. That he may be called a friend of God. How many of you believe in the gift that he has given us? Would you give him thanks? Would you give him praise? Would you honor him? With a gift that you lay down at His feet. With a crown. A crown that you lay at His feet. Right now we're given a crown of this moment. A crown of time. Let's lay it down at His feet. Let's just give Him that moment. That crown of glory. Father, we love You. We thank You. How fitting it is to be in Your house today. How fitting it is to be worshiping you, how fitting it is to look up, how fitting it is to take a moment to breathe, how fitting it is to stop the world from spinning for a second and just look at you, focus on you, how fitting it is for us to be here, how fitting it is for us to unwrap this gift through our praise, through our worship. I thank you for everyone in this room. I thank you for what you've given them in the past, what you're giving them right now, what you're going to give them in the future. I'm thankful that every single one in this room has a testimony of what you're doing in their life and their heart. I'm thankful for that, Lord. And I pray, God, that we not lose this heart of thankfulness. We don't lose the heart of gratitude through the upcoming months. And let that be the beginning of the spirit and the magic of Christmas. 
that we carry all year long. Father, I thank you. And I give you praise for this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. If you love him, say amen. Amen. You could be seated if you would like to. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 2. We're going to read some verses out of that, and then we're going to just flip over to John, chapter 1, and read the first five verses out of that and put them together. Because. Because is the title of this short message today. had the privilege, absolutely the honor of being able to read this passage, this very same passage of scripture in a lot of schools this past couple of weeks. It was cool. It really was. To see groups of students that are so caught up in everything else getting to see, oh, wait a minute. There really is something to this. This is not just a story. This, was, this is something living, something more to it, and really becomes the reason why we're here. Becomes the reason why we all have hope today in the middle of a very fallen and very broken world system. We still have hope. We have hope because of this message today. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth Peace, goodwill toward men. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Go to John chapter 1. I'm going to read the first five verses. It 
Sorry, Eli, we didn't write down our scriptures, did we? John chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And that Word was God. For He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through Him. And without Him nothing was made that was made. And in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light still to this day shines in the darkness. And the darkness still to this day cannot comprehend it. I added that little phrase in there. Because. Because. I want you, before I get into the message, just kind of play back over in your mind what I just read to you, this Christmas story, and we could add it, you know, more to it from the book of Matthew. Or, uh, but we got the synopsis here. So just kind of go as a replay over all that story again. And think about maybe one aspect of, of that story that really stuck out to you today. This is prophetic. There's a prophetic word in this today. Think about, I'm just going to give you like, I know it's going to be awkward, especially on the camera. Sorry, guys. I'm going to give you like 10 seconds of just quiet. Some of y'all say amen for that. (laughs) Now don't go sleep on me. 10 seconds of just quiet and think about which part of that story really Stuck out to you and go. Ten seconds of dead air sounds like and it feels like an eternity, doesn't it? Y'all want to know how to slow life down just a little bit? Spend some quiet time with God. Let life revolve around it for a change instead of the other way around. But I gave you ten seconds to think about one area, one element, one aspect, one verse, one part of that story that really stuck out to you. Maybe... Maybe you're like me and you had a lot of them that stuck out, but maybe not. Maybe there's just that one. We're gonna, I want you to hold on to that. Hold on to it tight. Hold on, hold on to it dearly for just a few minutes. Because that, that word happens two or three times in this passage of Scripture and in other translations even more than that. It is almost like there is a common thread of because weaving all of these ingredients all of this, this, this weaving a tapestry with all of these different colors coming together. Cooking with all of these ingredients and stirring and bringing them all together. There's this word because that, that pops up here and pops up there. As if he's saying there is a reason to all of this. There's a reason why all of these things are happening at once. There's a reason why the timing of this is coming down to the very moment that He has ordained it to happen. And that timing goes all the way back to in the beginning there was the Word of God creating everything, weaving all of this together, the scarlet thread from Genesis to Revelation, saying, I know what I am doing. I promise you, you can trust me. You think it's just another tax season. You think it's just another time to have to go and be interrupted in your plans and your life to get up and go in an uncomfortable fashion. Don't you know it was a little uncomfortable being and riding a donkey for about three quarters of a day? Um, No thanks, right? But there's a reason for the uncomfort. There's a reason for the interruption. There's a reason for the tax. There's a reason for the census. There's a reason why He wants us to take a step back and look up for a change. There's a reason for all of that. Because we're... I'm at an age where I still have children and 
they're, they're growing out of that a little bit. But how many of you remember when your children said, because? Why? Why, Dad? Why? Why does this happen? Why, why do we do this? Why? 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 Anybody, anybody ever hear the words, why? 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 And finally we get to the point as we just, just because. <laughs> That's right. Just because it's, it's just, you just got to, just some, there's some things in life you just got to walk with me and then you'll see. There's some things I don't even have the capacity to explain it to you. It just is because. It just links a subject with a reason. Because. Because, because of Christmas, Jesus begins in the manger what He's going to finish in the cross and sustain through the power and the Spirit of the resurrection. Because of the Christmas, he's, He begins with grace. Mary, you have found favor with the Lord. Because of Christmas, He initiates. He initiates. Because of Christmas, He comes. He comes. Aren't you glad He comes? Brother Matt had mentioned it earlier about the song, Joy to the World. It's about what? Jesus coming and he is going to come again he is going to look at this planet and his faithful people and he is going to say okay the time is now here all of these things have now come together for the perfect timing and I am stepping into this and I'm going to show you my because because of grace he steps in he comes not because I am worthy. Not because Mary was perfect or absolutely no flaw to her. But because He initiated it. Aren't you glad God initiated something in you one day? I wasn't even asking for it. And He showed up. I was dealing with an issue. And He showed up. The very first time God ever really showed up to me personally in my life where it made me take a step back and go wow God was I was in kindergarten and I had such bad anxiety I would mom and dad don't even know that some of it I would I would fake it for a little bit but I would cry myself to sleep over worrying about some things at kindergarten just just crazy stuff Y'all ever have that dream where you'd go to school and you'd look down and like your pants were gone? Yeah. I'd worry about stuff like that as a kindergarten. Would I forget this? Am I going to be able to handle this? Can I do this? And I would worry so much I would I'd cry myself to sleep sometimes. I would worry about certain things at certain times. Some of it would seem so huge and so big to me, I could not get over it. And anxiety would set in, and man, I would just worry. I would just worry. And then one day in kindergarten, when I laid down to take my nap, which I never did, because I didn't want to miss anything, and I'd be wor I was worried about what would happen while I was asleep, one day, I heard this little small voice that said, just give me your worry. And so I did. I said, Jesus, you can have it. I'm tired of it. And I fell asleep. After I said those words, the very next thing that I remember is her mother, Jenny's mother, tapping me on the back, saying, it's time to get up. And for the first time in my life, I fell asleep at nap time. And I thought, I'm still alive. And then I'm, the very next thought was, Jesus, you took that away. Now, I'm not here to tell you that I've never been anxious another day in my life. But every time anxiety hits me again, I go back to that day. And I remember how he said, just give it to me and rest. And I rested in him. 
He initiated that in me. Through a problem I had, He did that. Through grace. Through grace, He moves towards finishing, saying it's finished on a cross of mercy. Because of Christmas, He starts through grace what He's going to finish through mercy. Knowing, knowing that somewhere between grace and mercy, I'm going to need both of them. Right? Knowing that between Him starting something in my life and when He looks at my life and says, it is finished, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come join me in the joy of the Lord. Somewhere between grace and, and, and mercy, I'm, I'm going to need Him. I'm going to need Him to initiate in my life through grace and I'm going to need Him to cover my life through mercy. I'm going to need Him to look over me and say, forgive Him. Forgive Him. But He starts in grace, He ends in mercy, and He sustains through the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad for a sustaining power? That's why the Bible says He sealed you through that Holy Spirit. He sustains you. He keeps you going so that He who began a good work in you will keep working it in you until He said it is complete. Because of Christmas. Because of Bethlehem, I have hope that He comes to even the little of us. Those that think that they're forgotten, He comes. He comes. You ever gone through some stuff where you just feel like, God, where are you? Have you, have you forgotten? But He comes. And because of the manger, my dirty heart can be His home. Right? And because of Shepherds, I can not grow weary in well-doing that for generations they're raising the sheep that are to be placed into the temple to, to be sacrificed. and It's a thankless job. No one cares about the shepherds. They just care about the sheep. And if they come and inspect the sheep, they're not right. Who gets the blame? But if the sheep is just right, no one thanks the shepherd. We thank God for the sheep. Right? It's kind of like a good sound guy. <laughs> right? When everything's going good, no one notices you. But because of the shepherds, we cannot grow weary in well doing. That he notices. He notices everything. And because of the angels showing up and splitting the sky and the angel armies singing a praise song to God in the highest, it is a foreshadowing of the joy that's going to come when every sinner comes into repentance. A party in heaven takes place. Because of the angels showing up and splitting the sky, having a party in heaven, we get a foreshadowing of what God feels like every time one of us say, God, I need you. Come into my life. See, we think a lot of times through our eyes and our perspective, we say, God, I need you. And we think God looks at it and goes, ah, here we go again. It's the 25th time this week you said that. If you would just clean your act up just a little bit more. If you just get it straight and get it right. Right? If you just get a haircut and a real job. Right? And he looks on me with disappointment because I've asked about a thousand times. I need you. And we see through that. Through the angels singing and praising God. We, sing, we see what God sees in his perspective every time someone looks up to see him move in their life. Every time. That's why the Bible says when one sinner repents, the angels rejoice in heaven. Because of the star, we see that God really does give signs to those who are seeking heart for him. He really will. He really will show up. It may not be right when you want it, and it may not even be where you had it planned to be, but He will. He will. He's so faithful to show us where He wants us to be. He's so faithful to come in and direct us, and He's so faithful to 
to guide us when we need it the most. He's so faithful. He's so faithful to shine in a way where you're not going to miss it if you're looking for Him. Even if you're not quite right. The Magi were not quite right. They were not holy people. They, they had a little mixture of everything. All right? I'm not saying we need to be like them, but I'm saying that if He was willing to do that for them, how much more would He be willing to give His plans to those who seek His face? Because of Mary and Joseph, we have a way to respond to all of what God is doing. They didn't have anything. It didn't say that they responded in a way where Joseph wrote a billion dollar check and said, here, I'll, I'll just build a new hotel since we can't find a spot. They didn't have anything. I'm wondering if Joseph was worried about the taxes all the way going there. I know I would be. Right? There's a lot of people right now that are, that are happy Christmas is over, but now they're going to worry about the credit card bill coming in. Right? They didn't have a whole lot. Mary's 14, 15, maybe 16 years old. What does she have? What does she have? Let me ask you something. What were Mary and Joseph's spiritual gifts? I don't know. (laughs) You you can probably come up maybe with something. Maybe the gift of servant, right? Or, or, you know, something. What were their... I don't know. See, we even deem success in the church world on who's got the greatest spiritual gift. No, it's who's got the greatest capacity for God to move in their heart. Who's got the willingness to let God interrupt their life. Because of Mary and Joseph, we have a proper response. A praise, a trust, Giving God the availability and ability to come in and do whatever He wants in our life. At whatever time He deems fit. And how we respond to that is just say, All right, Lord, I'm your servant. Your will be done. Let me go one step further. Because of Mary and Joseph's parents, they were in the right place at the right time. I mean, have you ever thought about that? That for 400 years, for generation upon generation upon generation upon generation, there was a, a lineage that said, we're going to stay faithful, and we're going to teach our sons and our daughters how to seek God even in the dark periods. Even in the dark ages. And I'm not talking 15 minutes of dark ages. I'm talking 400 years of, of dark ages. Somebody taught Mary how to find favor with God. Somebody taught Joseph how to say, okay, uh, I'll listen, God, if this is your will. Somebody taught them, somebody brought them up, somebody trained them up in the way they should go. Somebody was faithful, even when they didn't get any notoriety at all. Because of Mary and Joseph's parents, we have hope that, you know what? God may not do the greatest work He's ever done through me, but what if He wants to do it through one of my children? This is a generational blessing. And we're going to to defeat generational curses with generational blessings. Right? David, you don't get to build the temple, but what you can do is teach your son. And David took it upon himself to get every material bit of material he could get every time someone gave him a gift card to Lowe's he went and he bought what he needed so that Solomon would have what what he needed to build the temple right because because go back to what you thought of element, what character, what part of the story stuck out to you? If 
prophetically speaking, that's what God wants to use in your life right now as a because. Whatever, whatever that was. Maybe there's no room in the end. Maybe that stuck out to you. And God says, I want you to take that and I want to show you a because. I want to show you how and why I want to move in your life through that. You're my because. What stuck out to you? Don't you write that down and pray about it. I want you to keep it in your heart as Mary pondered it in her heart. Keep that in your heart. That is, that is going to be where God wants to move in your life. That's where He wants to show you a because. A because He can still move even in spite of all the stuff that goes on in your life. That's the prophetic word God wants to give you. That's the, that's the spot right there He wants to move. There's something, there's a lesson in that right there He wants to teach you. Does that mean my time's up? <laughs> Matt, can you come play maybe one of those songs again? Let me ask you, what's your because? What's your because? Why are you here? Is it just because it's Christmas? Is it just because it's Sunday? What's your because? Why do you get up and still follow the Lord every day? What's your because? God, because of Christmas, is so approachable. Because of that grace and that mercy, He's so approachable. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. But He is. He is. He's saying, come here. Let me show you. Let me show you a because in your life of how I've let some things happen because you thought it was just life nope nope he's in it he's in it let him show you let's all stand and let's close one more song just praise Thanksgiving and honor, but also just in pondering, God, what are you trying to teach me? What part of life are you trying to teach me a because?
your whatever stuck out to you in that story that's what God wants to use the, the, the lesson behind that is what God wants to use to reveal himself to you in a deeper way this upcoming season this upcoming year this season of your life for example if what stuck out to you was Mary pondered all of these things in her heart I think Maybe God wants to reveal Himself to you at a deeper heart level. Maybe you had it here. And God wants to do it here. So whatever it is, that's what God wants to do to reveal. That's what God wants to use to reveal Himself to you. As you step into this new season of your life. And we're thankful for it today. How many of you are thankful God comes to us. Yes, Lord, we're so thankful. On behalf of Rock Creek Family Church, Merry Christmas. We love you so much and we wish you much love and much blessings. We wish you all the best as you prepare your heart for this, what God is going to do in this upcoming new year. We pray that you would find yourself and your walk closer to God than you ever have been. And that'd be the biggest gift of all. So turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.